the light. By the way, the any any parameters over changing the the sparking, like uh, mm -hmm. the oh, yeah. spark delivery timing. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is the area that means everything for tuning. And that is what, mid-range? That's your cruising area. Cruising area. That's the area that's gonna make the... <laughs> uh, even when people ask, how much am I gonna get? I says, you're gonna get in this area, but I'll tell okay. them right, I'm superstitious. Okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You guys recognize this truck? Welcome back, I'm in uh, John's. Cycle Fanatics Mobile, John's truck. On the way back uh, from JD Cycles, John and I just uh, drove down to JD Cycle Works to meet up with Dave, did a final tune on Silverback. And uh, as we speak, John is driving now. Actually, he's riding Silverback uh, back home. So I'm uh, bringing his truck back uh, to New Jersey. Pretty interesting, I was there during the, the tune itself of uh, the final tune of uh, uh, Silverback's final tune. And initially he starts by warming up the bike. He lets it uh, run, you know, very mild for like five, uh, six minutes and then lets it cool, cool down and then runs the, the dyno tune. So while he was letting it cool down, John had a phone call and I had a quick, uh, small conversation with, uh, with Dave and he explained a little bit about the, the tuning process, what parameters he, he checks, the computer uh, inputs that he puts that goes into the ECM. Very interesting, so take a listen. Uh, take a look, uh, listen to what he said. I, I didn't know this, very interesting. There she is. There it is. There she is. Ooh. In all her glory. show you all the rest of the beautiful bikes over here. All being uh, waiting for their turn to step onto the pedestal. Wow. Huh? What do you, what do you guys think? Let me know. <laughs> Combination with the paint job and Dave's perfect engine work. She's a beast. Wow, it is nice. Oh my God, look at the paint job. Nice, right? Very nice. Yeah. Actually, first time I'm seeing it in person. Wow. And we'll see it later with the bags on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the first tune? Mm -hmm. Your first run, okay. Doesn't that tank looks darker now than it did? Of course. Remember? So, yeah, it's, it's straight. Fire it up. Sure. Number at the top. Wow. We'll let it cool down a little bit. I'm what I'm trying to do is we gotta warm these things up. We gotta right. let the piss and expand. Otherwise, even stock like it's not good to get on the grip them. You know? Right, right. So this is a good opportunity to let it cool down a little bit and let everything Settle. Be where it needs to be. Yeah, so. so explain to me when it was showing two hundred the, yeah. the foot the foot pounds of torque, what is that? What is that? It's not the current reading of the... That is what the machine is telling me it's seeing in torque. Wow. Yeah. But that's not what you're going to calibrate it uh, finally. Well, no, I see. When I calibrate the torque, the torque, the torque control, the low torque control thing. Right. I'm mixing my words up. Happens. But I, I have a bar I put on my um, Eddie brake. Yeah. It's a big five, six foot bar somewhere around here, probably in the corner. I hang those weights on there and I zero it out. So that is telling me exactly what it sees for the torque. So this is flashing to that amount of torque at that point in time. Wow. Like, that's pretty wild. So is that what the bike is going to be putting out? You think? Uh, not on a dyno sheet. Not on dyno sheet. Not loading it that way. Gotcha. You know the dyno. Let's tell you, a dyno sheet. It, it's it's kind of a record of what it's seen during that run. Yeah. But it doesn't really show exactly what the bike's doing all the time. But it's a good comparison tool. Gotcha. And that's really what it is. It's a tool for comparing, okay, how did this one react versus the other one? And what changes we made to show that? You know, is it's not 100% accurate. 
you know, but that's and that's why it's good to have. Like you'll see the sheets; they all have SAE in them. Yeah. Which means Society of Auto of Engineers. It's a correction factor. Gotcha. And if you see one with uncorrected or STD, yeah, that's a different factor, and that actually has numbers which are not comparable to what we're seeing. So that's what we try to do in the industry to keep things so I can say, okay, this made this much power here in Pennsylvania versus a guy that made that much Like a power standard, to, to create a, a common standard for that's everybody. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, so that's, that's what's kind of, kind of keeping things, and yeah, we have a correction factor, which it takes into consideration the temperature and the air temperature, and mm -hmm. it does some math, and you can look up more about that stuff, and, and that's how it does its math to tell you what, the power should be on a perfect day of, I believe, 60 degrees and such and such. Yeah, it used day. to be in graphs once. Graphs with all kinds of tables, yeah. correcting correcting to uh, to height, to level, to temperatures. Yep. To... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all the same thing. Well, you're in aeronautics. So yeah, right, it's right. It's very similar. Yeah. yeah so, it's, so we have it's our pressure here, we have humidity here. All this stuff plays a part of what this machine is seeing to do its math. Like this machine... The new WinPEP 8 is a lot more accurate than the older one I had, which was called, which the softer was WinPEP 7. Mm -hmm. That one would fluctuate with air temperature a lot more. This one seems pretty consistent throughout the year, which is really good for me. You know, the old machine, in this time of year, I get big power numbers. Then come spring when it was wet and warm and humid, they would drop down about five or ten. Obviously, there's a, there's a thermometer that in real time picks up what the temperature puts uh, the info into the... It's over here, yep. And there's a whole little module over here. Got right? you on the floor, yeah, right? It yeah. records all that. It's, it's on the side of the machine where it's kind of a neutral area. Right. So it's not in place of fans or heaters or anything. Yeah. You want that to be kind of what it should be around the bike. Some people screw with them to mess around with the numbers of the <laughs> hair dryer. <laughs> skew your numbers you don't have any data for the next time you do it i know who are you cheating you're cheating either the customer or yourself or whoever you know unfortunately it's it's yeah. both right it's both but mostly yourself if you're trying to learn exactly and i'm always trying to learn yeah so it's, i don't that's why i try to keep everything i do everything the same you have a reference line always yeah and if everything i do the same i do my runs the same i my my runs i start at the same temperatures you know so all that i I try to keep it as consistent as possible. Tire pressure and all that stuff is all a consistency. Now you get a readout. You get a readout from uh, the bike's computer connected to the to your computer, and you get a readout of all the temperatures yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I have all that data up on the screen here, and that's what I'm watching. And the RPM and stuff like that, it's all coming from... Uh... This is all, everything that's coming out of the bike I can see here. Got you. And that's what I'm watching. I'm watching very different, I'm watching oxygen sensors, voltages, I'm watching for knock retard, I'm looking at, you know, temperatures, RPM, map, how much load is on the motor. All that tells me a lot. You know, so this is stuff I see a lot and that's why I like... That's one thing I really like about the TTS tuning software. It gives me the best data screen out of anybody. Mm -hmm. to see a multitude of different bits of data where like the power vision you can see six gotcha you know techno research is very good you can see a bunch more you know even the old stream needle tuners you can see a lot more and the the actual torque and the hp of the bike you get from the you get from the wheel that's yes. from the yes the rear wheel mm -hmm. the wheel so gotcha. there is a loss through it right right the, transmission and everything yeah and there's different Different losses can be created right now. We have a brand new chain, it's tight, it's a little heavier. Right. That's gonna have a little bit of a loss applied to it. You know, once it gets broken in, that may change. You know, gear ratio makes a big change. Mm -hmm. you know, tire size. There's a lot of things which change it all. Is the is there a readout through the com through the motorcycle's computer that tells you the torque and the HP? No. No, right? No, it doesn't. No, it does. No. So, right. There is Something in the software, I can kind of get an idea, but I never mess right. with it. With gotcha. TTSs, you know, I just that's that's this tool over here that I use for all that. Yeah, that's that's, that's coming from the dyno. These, these are tools, right? You know, they're data tools. Gotcha. You know, we use them for diagnostics, and we can see what. The thing is going now, on. now, when you when you're doing the dyno tune itself, the tune you yeah. change specific parameters mm -hmm. 
in the ECM or the ECU mm -hmm. to deliver more uh, air, more uh, fuel mm -hmm. per oh, yeah. per RPM, yeah. and it's just like pretty much clicking here, clicking there to add. A bit more than that. I, essentially, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm calibrating the the ECM to match the airflow of the new components. Okay. And for that, we have VE tables, which is volumetric efficiency. And these tables here, you can see it's from 3% up to 100% and fly by wire, they'll idle around, you know, three to five, four percent mm -hmm. and up to 6,500 RPM. So that is the table for the front cylinder. The rear cylinder is different. Got you. They need different, they need different air flows. Different, different air flows? Different numbers. I mean, I'm saying it wrong. No, no, but different why? Different numbers because it's how the bikes run. The front cylinder runs different than the rear. Exhaust system will scavenge oh, differently. I got you. I got you. Right. That's why it's important. These, these different are, length of uh, the pipe, or yeah, they're pretty much yep, the same. And they will scavenge different, and that's why you have a really bad exhaust system. Mm -hmm. You'll see these numbers really skewed in different areas, and gotcha. you'll see a loss of torque. So you think it's actually possible that one piston, a one one cylinder, actually gives out a little bit more power than the other? Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure there's a variation, but I have no way to tell. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, you know, but there's. There's a lot more in it, and we have tables for timing. Each cylinder has its own timing table, and there's a lot of other tables which help me do other things with timing and knock and lots of other settings on it. So it's, Interesting. These, these are ones I have to choose from. You know, wow, so all I these work, parameters. And I work with most of them when I'm recalibrating a bike to make it run the best. And, and, I, make, and I make the bikes run efficiently. Where they need to be run efficiently down here in the light. By the way, any any parameters over changing the the sparking, like uh, the oh, yeah. spark delivery timing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's these tables. Gotcha. That's all timing. You can see there, it's right from down at idle. This is your starting area. This is your mid range cruising. This is your high end load, your high load area. Uh -huh. Like when we're doing a dyno run, you're going to be running down this column 100 kPa or 100 percent, depending on how your table set up and right down to whatever RPM I shut it off. So tuning is more than this two column. For a lot of people, unfortunately, tuning is only these two columns. Yeah. But this is the area that means everything for tuning. And that is what, mid-range? That's your cruising area. Cruising area. That's the area that's gonna make the bike run smooth. It's gonna make it run efficiently. It's gonna be responsive. It's not gonna fall and sputter on his face and sputter and do all kinds of crazy things. These are the areas which are most important that get ignored by most tuners. No, because they care about giving you one thing. The that far right. Far right is the top uh, top uh, HP and horsepower and torque. Yeah, yeah. Most a lot of people, unfortunately, they care about giving you a dyno sheet. If it kind of runs okay, they're done. You know, so it's it's a lot more to the, it's a lot more to me. Uh huh. You know, to really try and figure them all out. So, and these numbers. Well, what do you predict, by the way, for for Silverback? I can't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you probably probably know already, but you're not going to say it right, we right now. We got to be patient until the time comes. Okay. <laughs> I'm very superstitious. I want, okay. If I predict numbers, it seems like it always bites me in the butt. Okay. <laughs> uh, even when people ask, how much am I going to get? I says, you're going to get in this area, but I'll tell them okay. right, I'm superstitious. Okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Sometimes the patience pays off the best. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> You know, then you see what, how it shakes down, and if you want to make adjustments, you make adjustments or changes, and you go from there. But I think it's it's going to be good. Going to be good plus. It'll be very, very <laughs> good, yeah. Very, very good. We kept our our cam that we like to use, which is mild cam. It's a nice cam. It's not too aggressive on the valve train. So that helps things live longer. Right. Now that we have also the love jugs and the cooling, yeah, everything. Yeah, different things there, and uh, help aid with cooling. John understands not to let it bake in a... In a yeah, tunnel. I was with him on that oh ride. My oh, my God. <laughs> That's just crazy. They can only do so much. I know. You know. They can only do so much. The best thing is shut it off. And like I say to John, is if you get into situations, go home and change that oil. Yeah. Because that oil is ruined. I don't care what you have. I did that after I heard you say that. Yep. Go home and change it. You know, it's... These bikes get very, very hot. All of them. Even in stock form, they get very, very hot. The more we take care of them, the longer they'll live. Yeah.
mark the guns. Now with the new change on, I'm sure she's changing this a little bit. I actually, I was reading in some forums, I don't yeah. know if it makes sense to you, but uh, anywhere, they're saying anywhere, it could be from 5 to 10 percent it could be loss yeah going to the chain drive it but will. obviously it's more reliable getting back frankenstein oh, that the one putting back silver back together again humpty dumpty Hope you enjoyed this short uh, little uh, explanation or eye-opener of uh, the tuning process. Here's a little walk around uh, that I did around uh, Silverback. Beautiful outside of JD Cycles. Uh. I'm going to try out his shawarma and falafel. Got lamb, a few tomatoes, and a lot of tahini. Let's dig into it. this uh, short video uh, I'm Sandy watching Boldy Shift till the next video guys peace out